Swinging a sword counts as punching too. This time on scrolling down the belt, it's still a beat em up, so we'll allow it. Some of you may be saying, now wait a second, this isn't a beat em up, it's a hack and slash. And I ask you, what is a hack and slash game if not just a beat em up where you use a sword instead of your fists? The game in question is none other than Capcom's Trojan, known in Japan as Tatakai no Banka which translates to Requiem for Battle. This hit arcades worldwide in 1986, and North America got it in March, a full month before Japan did. This is the first Capcom title that we've seen in Scrolling Down the Belt, but it absolutely will not be the last. Trojan takes place in a post-apocalyptic future where civilization is suffering the aftermath of a nuclear war. Amidst the chaos, things have been taken over by Ken Ol, which translates to Sword King, who rules over the population with an iron fit no sword. This probably sounds familiar to any manga or anime fans out there, since this is exactly the plot of Fist of the North Star. The manga ran in the pages of Shonen Jump from September 1983 to August 1988, and the popular anime had also begun airing on Fuji TV in October 1984 and was still running as of when Trojan was released. Post-Apocalypse was just in the water. And what's an evil ruler without a hero that rises up to oppose them? In this case, our sword and shield wielding protagonist has two different names. The western localization calls him Trojan, which certainly works with the game's title. But in Japan, he's known as Ryu, and one of the later bosses that resembles the main character in terms of moveset anyway is called Trojan, so yeah. Trojan's cabinet came equipped with an 8-way joystick, which is particularly important to the way the game plays. Jumping is the fastest form of movement and can also give you a huge advantage in most situations. So this makes hitting those diagonal forward and backward jumps absolutely key. Much like in 1984's Kung Fu Master, you push up on the joystick to jump instead of using a button. But things had evolved since then, and jumping with a joystick instead of a button had become much more unusual. This certainly put some players off of Trojan, but more on that later. The game also uses two buttons, one to swing a sword, and one to use a... to block enemy attacks. That's right, you can actually block! This was also a very unusual mechanic for games at this time, regardless of the genre, and switching between these buttons quickly to be able to attack and immediately guard is another key mechanic to surviving Trojan. But not only do you have to be facing the direction that you want to block in and be able to manage switching between the two buttons depending on your situation, but enemies also have the ability to completely disarm you with magic balls. If you block one of these balls, your sword and shield go flying away and must be retrieved in the form of a power-up. In the meantime, you can only punch and kick. Jump pads are also smattered throughout the game to allow you to jump even higher than normal. Sometimes they're a requirement to proceed through a level, but other times they're just used to be able to take out enemies that are stationed on higher ground. Though honestly, you can usually just avoid those enemies. The rank and file goons mostly consist of dudes that either wield maces, throw knives, pop out of manholes with crossbows, or drop various explosives on you from above. But as you might expect, the bosses are the real stars of the show here. Each level has one mid-boss partway through the level, and then a final boss to close out that level. And they even all have names! We have axe-throwing Mamushi, who usually comes in pairs, the dreaded Iron Arm, who is one of the game's most difficult bosses despite being the very first one, rolling Armadillo Man Armadillon, Goblin, and yes, I'm hitting him on the other side of the screen here, Mace-wielding Muscular, Trojan, and the Sword King himself, Achilles. As a game, Trojan has a reputation for being difficult, and this is really down to two reasons. Understanding the concept of spacing is incredibly important. I mentioned it in the last episode, but its importance here warrants some further explanation. Fighting game players will be very familiar with this concept, but spacing is basically understanding the range that your attacks have. What's the furthest distance you can be away from an enemy in order to hit them with your attack and still be able to react to theirs? 
Spacing in Trojan often involves jumping diagonally as well, so you'll know very quickly if you're not cleanly inputting those diagonals. In the original arcade version, there aren't many bosses that you can simply walk up to and just mash the attack button to beat. The other reason Trojan is so difficult is that bosses, heck, even regular enemies, absolutely melt your health away. You can come into a boss fight with a full health bar, but if you're not careful, you'll be dead before you even know what happened. You'll occasionally see a power-up that will restore your health, but the game is very stingy with doling those out. Not to mention the time limit can also work against you, particularly in longer stages like 3 and 5 where you have to move at a slightly slower pace. The perfect example of both of these points of difficulty is the final boss, Achilles. The easiest way to beat him is to space your jump in so that you're neither too close nor too far away and immediately crouch guard. If he also guards, you can move in on him and attack a couple of times to whittle down his health before he'll retaliate. The spacing and timing is very tight, and if you let your guard down for even a second, he'll absolutely obliterate you. If you can defeat Achilles, wait a minute, peace will probably return? Probably? Anyway, you're treated to a wonderful roster of all the bosses strutting around on screen in this interesting message. What do you mean, challenge us again from the start? That's right, there's a second loop. But this time, everything is faster and more difficult. Performing that strategy on Achilles even requires you to be darn near frame perfect in your execution. And what do you get for doing this? The same thing, but now the ending screen says thank you very much the end instead. But where did this idea even come from? Well, it came from another Capcom arcade game, 1985's Ghosts and Goblins, or Makai Mura. This game is also well known for being brutally difficult, and it established the idea of requiring the player to complete the second loop in order to see the true ending. Thanks a lot, Arthur. The director of Trojan is also someone that we've discussed before, Takashi Nishiyama. He directed 1984's Kung Fu Master at IREM, the game that basically brought about the beat-em-up genre. He then left IRM for Capcom, where he began work on Trojan. You can watch the first episode of Scrolling Down the Belt, which focuses on Kung Fu Master, for more information on Nishiyama. But suffice to say that Trojan is considered to be the evolution of the ideas that Kung Fu Master presented. And of course, Trojan received some ports on home computer platforms, such as MS-DOS, and apparently an unreleased version for the ZX Spectrum. But the most well-known of these ports is the home console one on the NES and Famicom. And surprisingly, the Famicom version went on sale a mere eight months after the release of the arcade game. And it's a good conversion, too. It manages to keep the feeling of the original while also adding some quality of life improvements to make this version considerably more manageable to clear. Or at least I thought it was. The levels and enemy types are mostly the same, though a few new ones have been added. The home port also adds the ability to go down into the manholes to confront some of the boss characters and collect brand new power-ups. Of course, we still have the heart to restore health, but now these boots replace the jump pads of the arcade game, allowing you to leap high into the air for a limited amount of time. The S increases character walk speed, and the P powers up your weapon, allowing you to take more of a boss's health with a single sword swipe. You can also free rats to gain extra points, too. The levels and boss order remain largely the same, but a new boss was added between Trojan's final appearance and Achilles in the final level. This boss is King Shriek, and yes, the pieces of wall that he breaks off while Kool-Aiding Man through it do damage you, so be sure to guard those. But best of all, the difficulty is just more lenient. The enemies aren't as aggressive as they were in the arcade version, and there aren't as many of them. It also takes considerably longer for them to chew through a full bar of health, leaving much more room for mistakes, and even allowing you to just brute force your way through certain situations. Spacing is still important, but Ryu's hitbox seems much more generous. And though most of the general strategies for fighting these bosses do carry over, a couple are very different. Iron Arm is not nearly as difficult, since you can just guard him and jump in on him when he launches one of his metal arms at you, something he didn't do in the original at all. 
Achilles also demands that you do a bit more hit and run with him by jumping in on him a lot more deeply instead of a more shallow jump and waiting until he blocks you. There's no second loop in the NES version, and it has these amazing anime-style portraits of the bosses at the end. This port also features a sort of early one-on-one -on -one fighting game, a versus mode where player one controls Ryu and player two controls Trojan. It's not very deep at all, but if you need something to do with two players other than the standard two-player alternating mode, here it is. One interesting tidbit that I was unable to confirm myself is that apparently the Famicom version won't boot at all on the early run of the Famicom consoles that featured square buttons. These systems were recalled due to the buttons getting stuck and damaged since they were made of much softer material, as well as just being buggy hardware in general. The January 9th, 1987 issue of Famitsu Magazine gave this port scores of 6, 7, 8, and 7 in the cross-review section. Reviewers pointed out that it was a bummer that the sprites were much smaller than the arcade version, that it was five times more interesting than the very difficult to advance in Ghosts and Goblins, it being fairly easy to play once you got the hang of it, and it just being a generally pretty successful arcade port to the Famicom. And the readers of Family Computer Magazine, or Famimaga for short, also gave it a score of 19.68 out of a possible 30. The Japanese TV commercial featured narration by actor Yasuo Yamada, best known for voicing Lupin the Third from 1971 to 1995. He was also the official dub voice for Clint Eastwood. Japanese site IGCC.jp, the Institute of Game Culture Conservation, did a series of interviews with former Gamist Magazine editor Zenji Ishii about his favorite arcade games, which included Trojan. Ishii mentioned that a lot of players felt it was too difficult and swore it off shortly after release, which probably resulted in many arcades taking it off the floor prematurely. He also felt jumping with the stick is the one point that made it particularly difficult for people. Also, the idea of guarding in any type of game at this point was pretty rare, so people probably didn't fully grasp that concept. Ishii himself didn't feel it was actually all that difficult because of how reliably you could implement strategies and patterns. He's not totally wrong about this, but I found the arcade version to be very fiddly with what worked and what didn't, even when I thought I had specific strategies down pretty well. I probably didn't spend as much time with the game as Ishii did, though. After all, this was the guy who would get so ridiculously into the games that he was writing strategies for in Gamus that at one point he held the country's high score in Darius. But Trojan is a fun game. I personally prefer how breezy and straightforward Kung Fu Master is by comparison, but I can understand someone being more drawn to Trojan because of its complexity and higher skill ceiling. The spacing is just a bit too precise for me at times, and the speed at which enemies can chew through your health bar makes almost any mistake a potentially fatal one. It's an important part of beat 'em up history to be sure, but if you want an easier time with it, go with the NES version. Next time on Scrolling Down the Bell, Namit in Janizo.